Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode four of season five of Cobra Kai. Last episode, Daniel pushed one too many buttons after getting Mike Barnes involved and what a run wonderful reunion that was. But good old Terry caught wind of what they were souping up and burned Barnes's furniture store to the ground as a warning to Daniel that he told him he was playing with fire and then quite literally burned his place to the ground. Sam is having a crisis of identity and uh, after Miguel seeking counsel from his peers, from Johnny, you know, tries to make amends, apologizes. And of course, you know, she's, she, it's not healthy for them to be in this relationship right now. Not until she figures her thing out. And I completely side with Sam on that, that she took the right path with that. Um, but they are going their separate ways, still supporting each other, still being there, still being friends, but she needs time to figure her stuff out because she literally had this uh, <laughs> sensory deprivation uh, experience that really showed just how fractured her mind is right now. And I can't wait to see what they do with her journey. Um, Johnny's going to be a dad with uh, Carmen. So I can't wait to see how that goes. I can't wait to see Miguel and Robbie's reaction once they find out what's going on. And I can't wait because we actually have not seen yet any interaction between Robbie and Miguel. And I know Miguel's like just kind of swallowing it down for Johnny to kind of just push through it, to get through it for him. But uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we can mend that bridge. It's not going to be an easy path. We've seen that in the trailers, but I, I hope that in the end there is redemption for these two and that maybe at the end of the day, everybody can find peace. Um, but yeah, man, let's hop into this episode. So, if you want to see the full length reaction, remember it's on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. They are on watch along format and you also get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel. You also get the suggestion and then vote on what movies we react to here on the channel. We got monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage to try to make it worth your while since you are going out of your way to support the channel. But of course, I know never could do that in a simple way you can help us out. It's just by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos because that engagement goes a long way with helping the channel grow here on YouTube. But if you're new, if you're tuning in for the first time, I hope you enjoy this reaction. And if you do, stick around, leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. But here we go, guys. We're diving into episode four, Downward Spiral. Ah, oh, that does not give me any confidence. Let's go ahead and ride on. Here we go. Hey, Johnny, um, could you help me with something? <laughs> He's already there. I'm here for whatever you need, Carmen. <laughs> what is this? Are we just riffing on Top Gun right now, man? This has got to be a dream. And I've seen Top Gun now. Check out my reaction. Last time we were covering this, I had not seen it. Oh, yeah, the kid's born already. Oh, no, that's her dream. <laughs> That's even better. I don't get it. Silver goes and burns down Barnes's store, threatens that I'm next, and now nothing. Snake always wait for right time to strike. Yeah, but how is he gonna strike? Maybe now Barnes will join our fight. I don't think he knows it was Silver. I heard he left town while the insurance company investigates. Wow, damn. Well, now no attack on my watch. Almost ready? Oh, she doesn't know. It's too much. I'm trying too hard. What just she happened? No, you look great. I feel I'm not dressed. <laughs> now you're perfectly dressed for a day off. UG, you're handsome. Shut up. Keep an eye on the dealership and the house. Just be ready for anything. I love that he's basically just a like a glorified bodyguard. Look no further. I'm the man. Uh, no, I don't know my bank routing number. <laughs> Johnny, no. Thank God. I got someone at the door. Let me call you right back. Fucking about to get scammed. Do you have Robbie's stuff for me? Yeah. I like, you know, she got her shit turned around too. It actually looks like a functioning adult lives here now. Ah, uh, made some changes. Oh my God. You knocked Carmen up. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, how did you? You took down the babes. It smells nice in here. And now you're making that face. What face? 
That one, overwhelmed. It's the same face you made when I got pregnant. Okay, what if I told you there was a way you could earn real money without being scammed and without a tie? I tried that after high school. Some of the women got a little grabby. <laughs> you know, ride shares, food delivery, but you will need a real phone for that. Oh, he's going to be an Uber. Right, we saw that in the trailer, actually. I like that his first thought went straight to being a male stripper or whatever. Like a Chip and Dale's dancer. <laughs> Ew, Anthony, can you not stare at my friends? <laughs> Hi. Um, hey, uh, hey, how you doing, Sam? Hey. Not awkward at all. Uh, is anyone? Yeah. I mean, I mean, no, but I. Yeah, you can. <laughs> hey, Tori. I'll see you later. Wasn't he supposed to be out of town? I thought. And everybody's here. Real hard for Sam to move on with everybody. I was Mexico. Like. Did you hit up the beach with your dad? Wasn't really that kind of trip. Uh, we did work out a few of our issues. There's still some that are just too big to solve. Mm. A lifeguard. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Have we been here before? This address sounded familiar. I don't think so. Mr. and Mrs. LaRusso, it's so nice of you to come. I'm Ava Garcia. You're Ava Garcia. You're about to say that, and then I interrupted. Now I'm mortified. <laughs> Helping on the privileged teens is very important to her, to both of us. And well, then we share that in common. Your it's house not is so silver, oh, is this it? Isn't my home. Yeah, it it's. to one of our donors, actually. Yep. God damn it. Daniel and Amanda Larusso. What a pleasure to finally <gasps> have you at my. Fuck. What a coincidence. Your wife and I supporting the same charity. Bullshit. Whatever you're up to, you leave my family behind. You do not ruin this day for my wife. I have no intention of ruining her day. Let's just hope nothing else ruins it for her. God, what a snake! <laughs> this is the show that was giving you shit at school? Dude, you've been in my house. But you dated my sister. I did a lot of sisters. <laughs> Yeah, we should have thought of that before you and your uh, your weak ass friends decided to go after me. I said I was sorry. Okay, and, and you already got me back. Oh, oh, you you thought we were cool. Okay, let me think. Um, are we cool? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> oh no. Oh, God. Hey, at least he's in their lazy river. This one looks like it might actually not be full of piss. Dude, you're only the champ because Diaz got hurt. Probably won as many fights as you did. Yeah, but one of those is against you. That wasn't much of a fight now, was it? <laughs> you really gonna take that from him? From lip? Hey, hey, hey! Back off! Hey, yo, champ! All right. You guys stay on your side, we don't have a problem. I know you can handle yourselves. But don't tell me that the best place for Kenny is Cobra Kai. God, now this is on her. Oh, uh, dude. I don't think we're safe here. Okay, he's not gonna do anything at a charity event in front of a bunch of people. Anyway, you promised to keep the karate conflict away for the day. You know, and that's before he lured us into the lion's den. I wonder if this is just like a whole psychological maneuver to get Daniel to spiral. Or, who? or he poisons Amanda. <laughs> Mrs. LaRusso, I'm not against your husband. Well, he would beg to differ. He is not taking a sip of this yet. The way I treated him in the past was unforgivable. Mm -hmm. But that's not me anymore. Yeah, okay. That's why I took over Cobra Kai from John Kreese. I saw the way he was teaching those lessons. It's a shame what Vietnam did to his mind. What I want is to train kids to use karate, not for war. Oh, what if, what if he makes this seem like sending his man to rough up my potential hires? He's making Daniel out to be like Crease, like trapped in this feud. 
Oh no, that's even better. No. We have just as much right to those slides as anyone else. Great. You coming? I mean, it is kind of ridiculous that they would divvy up the park like that, but. Oh God. And there's Keith. I thought you said it wasn't in Cobra Kai anymore. That's what Sensei told me. Damn it! Misunderstanding, as usual. Stop it! All of you, or you're all getting kicked out. Okay, clearly we can't coexist in peace, so let's find a solution. We need to go. No. How about a race? A race. Yeah, I'll go. So will I. Champ v champ. Whoever wins gets the park. Deal. Man, I feel bad for Robbie right now. And Miguel, man. You didn't tell me you sent Chosen to assault numerous job applicants at Silver's Dojo? Yep, here it comes. He was put in a bad situation. Believe me, calling him job applicants is generous. Mm -hmm. Hey, up next. Authentic bonsai trees. They must be grown with love and care in order to develop strong roots. That's what my mentor taught me many years ago. He not only brought these trees into my life, but what they represent. Harmony, balance, and honor. What a gorgeous message. I'll start the bidding for this collection. It's gonna be fucking silver, isn't it? He's gonna burn him! $30,000. Unless there are any objections? Oh, Daniel's gonna lose his shit. Sold to the generous Mr. Silver. And I know exactly where to put these, if I may. In the wood chipper. Giving back to underprivileged youth has always been a passion of mine. And it is entirely what Cobra Kai Karate. Keep your cool, Daniel. As a joint initiative with Dreams for Teens, I will be offering free karate classes to all low income students at any one of our dojos. <sighs> Would help me spread the message to continue assisting those in need. Thank you all so much for being here. God, with everything Amanda has seen, this would work so well in making Daniel seem like the crazy one. Because she's seen firsthand Crease, but this is her first time seeing Silver. And she's seen the stuff Daniel's been through, and he's framing all this so well. Ah. You know, not everybody gets to do their dream job. This is a Sony production, so you makes sense. I never wanted to work in a pawn shop, let alone own three. Dealing with the likes of you is like the worst part of my day. Really? So why don't you quit? It allows me time for what matters most. My family. Wow. You have a family? Three kids. You'll never meet them. <laughs> Figure out what matters most. Doing that other stuff gets a little easier because you know you're doing it for them. Dude, never expected to get like an actual like heart to heart scene between these two. Aww. Still giving you one star for touching my food. Join the club, man. That was cool. I know you're in Cobra Kai because of me, but I just wanted you there because I thought it would help you. It did. It'll turn you into someone you don't want to be. That's what happened to me. I'm glad you didn't hold back. I needed that. No, Kenny, I have been down this path. Before. Back off. Uh, I used to get picked up. Now I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm never quitting because I'm not a quitter. Damn. Kenny! <laughs> Dude, how does Kyler keep becoming more of a fucking himbo every fucking season? Ah, oh, damn. Oh shit. And that's going to that's going to get in her head. This is you. What are you going to do about it? Am I going to strike first if that's what you think? You don't have the balls to anyway. Oh, 
in a good word for her family huh i am not gonna let you get away with this i think your mind's playing tricks on you danny boy then what did you say to ava about my wife what did i say yep yep i told her she's a phony a psychopathic liar who should never be trusted he's so smart He's making me look like the bad guy when he's the one attacking my family. He just said all these lies about my wife to Miss Garcia. Actually, he spoke quite highly of him. He told me how respected your wife is in the community, how your whole family is, or was. God damn it. <sighs> he's such a good villain. <laughs> By defending them, you're part of the problem. I was just hoping that we could have a fun day together. But I guess that's impossible. It's only impossible if you're still in Cobra Kai. Mm. Well, I'm not leaving Cobra Kai. Well, then I guess that's it. You and Kenny and everyone else can stay brainwashed, but I'm done trying to help. Look, I know you think just because you came down to Mexico that you think you're a good guy. Well, guess what? You're not. Well, look who's talking. And let's get clear about one thing. I didn't come down to Mexico for you. Nobody asked you to go anywhere. Hey, hey. We're all friends now. No. We're not friends. We never will be. Mm, damn. I get it. I get it. I'm afraid we're never going to have normalcy ever again. Not when you continue to stir up these ridiculous fights. Fight at furniture store. My fault. You had a fight at a furniture store? She didn't know about that. He manipulated this whole thing to get us to fight. Do you hear yourself? You need to let me and Chosen handle this. It's the only way to make it all end. Fine. Handle it. Where are you going? Away from here. Away from you. I just need space. I'm taking the kids with me. <sighs> My God, that was brilliant. I was saying this way back when, when Silver was being called in at the end of season three, that he is a whole different kind of beast. And this is what I was talking about. This is the way Silver's fights, man. He's so, like, he is so less straightforward than Kreese. And he knows the optics of all this. He knows how to play this. He knows Daniel's triggers. He knows... This was so good. This was so good. <laughs> oh my God. I get it too. And you know, like up until this point, like Amanda would have the benefit of the doubt all the way up until now for Daniel, especially when she had firsthand experience with Kreese and what was going on. But this, this is new. This is different. Now he could have mentioned, but I don't, he, I mean, a fair thing to have mentioned would be that uh, somebody burned down Mike Barnes's uh, furniture store, you know, there was a fight there, and after it happened, it got burned down, though he's got no evidence to link it, it's highly circumstantial, but, I mean, it's something, but the thing is, he got him to completely embarrass Amanda and himself in public at something that was deeply important to his wife. Daniel's a hothead, we know it, we know it firsthand, deeply, how volatile he can be. And Terry knows that too. Played it. Played him like a fiddle, man. Then the stuff with uh, Miyagi-Do and Cobra Kai at the water park. It's bound to happen. These people hang out at all the same places. And they're stirring up trouble, though... You know, they start off and with the optics again, optics is an important key part of this episode is, you know, there's this animosity that it still exists. While I do think Miguel is being a little hot headed at this point, 
the guy did kick him off a balcony and almost paralyze him. He's going to have a strong lean no matter what. He's like, I thought you stayed out of this, but he always tries to keep them separated. But that's, again, the optics. You know, rumor is he quit. Even Kenny doesn't believe he quit until he confronts Robbie at the park. But, like, the, uh, he's trying to keep the peace. He, he even stepped in to protect for Anthony in that moment, too. Like, but we don't, they don't see that. They don't know that. Just like with what's happening with Daniel and Amanda and Silver. Though nobody's really pulling the strings here. It's just unfortunate circumstances. But Kenny really doubling down, especially on that, like, you know, not being able to compute Robbie leaving. And then now even just not even counting Robbie as like a peer now or a mentor. He's like, oh, he quit. I'm better than I ever have. This was best for me. And now he's just like, now he just sees weakness in Robbie, which is kind of sad. Like he was really went hard down this path and even sabotaged that race. When, when confronted with it, he didn't deny it. He's like, well, what if I did? So what? Shortcuts. And when they were like, cheaters, the look in Tori's face, like she thought was, she was over that hur hurdle. And she knows for a fact that Cobra Kai is not afraid to cheat. Now, again, it's happening. And it's, this is not about survival. She's got her own lessons to learn. She's got her own veil to tear down throughout this whole thing. And again, Silver knew exactly how to frame that to get her back on his side once she confronted him about what was going on. Framing it from her perspective, her upbringing, and, about, and equating it to what her life has been like. Just getting his teeth in her, man. She doesn't realize what's going on. Uh... And Sam just wanting to stay away from all this stuff. I did think Miguel was being pushing a little bit with him putting on his typical flirtatious maneuvers. It worked. It was working. I don't think it was very respectful of the conversation they had in the last episode, but I get it. It's kids. They'll do what they do, especially when you're, you're, you're still in love. You're still not really willing to let go. You might pry a little bit. She wasn't unreceptive, so that's a good sign, but... They can't avoid any of this drama and it's still circling her down and this misconception and animosity between Robbie and Miguel is only being compounded. I really, I don't know. I hope it happens this season, but I don't know. It's going to be a complicated thing. They've got a lot of baggage to work through, but I do hope in the end they do come out of this on top and together, united, especially for Johnny's sake. There's only one more season after this, right? I think they said six is the final season. Or have we, I don't think, no, I don't think, I think there's no confirmation about when this ends yet. But overall, this was a really good episode, especially all that silver scenes, man. Thomas Ian Griffith, he's a gem to bring back into this. I know he had retired from acting for a really long time until he got brought back into this thing, but he is killing it, man. Really. Then them coming back and Amanda and fighting with Daniel and uh, Joseph just sitting on the couch watching 90 Day Fiance with a good old cult popping up on the screen. At least it wasn't Big Ed. But still, that was kind of a funny little moment. And then the whole, like, the fight at the furniture store hurt. I even know what about that. Shannon and Johnny kind of, like, talking it out, working through their stuff again. Um, I like that they're mending that bridge. I like that both of Robbie's parents, even though Robbie's right now still figuring things out, that Robbie's parents are in better places like she was an addict she was from going from guy to guy she was just running away with men left and right leaving him on his own and they're both trying to be better now and i i really like that they're showing this reformation uh in this once broken home uh it's still not repaired but it's still being mended and they're trying everybody's trying to do better and especially johnny though like he is so ridiculous man him doing these uh fucking DoorDash jobs and Ubering and all that stuff all at the same time. He's got a problem with like providing services. It's happened when he was installing that TV in season one. Like customer service is not in his tool set at all. And it shows it made it fun, but like, I don't see how you would get any kind of viable work out of this in the long term, but he's got to do something. And I like that they even brought that back around to the pawn shop guy 
and them having a actual heart to heart where they were kind of like this like frustrated partners out of necessity that he would just pop up every now and then when Johnny needed to pawn something. And this time he actually kind of helped in a revelation with this little touching heart to heart between the two. I, I like that a lot. It's a nice way to kind of like bring, keep that character around, but also kind of increase the importance a little bit. I like this episode a lot. This might be my favorite episode of the season so far. I mean, we're only four episodes in. We still got six to go, but we'll see. Guys, what did you think of the episode? What do you think about everything that's transpired here? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Make sure to stick around, subscribe, because we've got plenty of stuff coming your way. we got more Cobra Kai coming each day for you guys until we are caught up with the season. If you want to see the full-length reaction, check those out over on Patreon, or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access to those as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out to Channel Legends, Manny Share, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yori Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Raven McCann. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Remember, Cobra Kai never dies. Take care, everybody.